This episode of Dissension is brought to you by BetDSI, the number one site for all your betting picks. Use bonus code Dissension when you sign up at DissensionMMA.com. And Apocalypse Syndicate for your customized t-shirts and graphic designs. What's up, fight fans, and welcome back to more Dissension MMA, the MMA show for diehard fans, and not for those who think that Sauteropolis is a dinosaur. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Fight Freak Poli. As always, I have my full card predictions for another UFC event, UFC Fight Night 29, Maya vs. Shields. Without any hesitation, we're going to get to the first one right now. First Facebook preliminary fight is between Alan Patrick and Garrett Whiteley, and I'm taking Whiteley on this one. Now, both are 7-0, however, Whiteley has finished every single one of his fights, six of them in the first round. The last one, he finished a third round submission via triangle choke. So I don't think uh, cardio is going to be really a big factor, even though he's used to finishing most of his fights early. Next, we have Chris Carriasso taking on Iliarde Santos. That's not what I said. Anyway, Santos is coming off a fight in a great performance, even though he lost to Ian McCall. But he's an absolute elite flyweight. So even though a strong wrestler like McCall really tried to take him down, he struggled. So I don't see how Carriasso is going to be able to uh, follow the same game plan. His takedowns aren't as strong as McCall's, especially after he's been on, what, a two-fight losing streak now? So i got to go with Santos for the win. Again, I didn't say that. Next, we have Jan Cabral taking on David Mitchell. Now, we haven't seen a whole lot of Cabral since his time on The Ultimate Fighter Brazil Season 2, but I'm really hoping that uh, his aggressiveness will be a little too much for David Mitchell. He's not super tenacious, so he should be able to overwhelm that, and even though they both rely a lot on their grappling skills, I'm going to go with Cabral. Hopefully, he'll be the more well-rounded fighter. Next, we have Igor Araujo taking on Eldemar Alcantara. Uh, Alcantara is a huge welterweight. He was fighting at light heavyweight for his debut. Now, even though he fought, he goes back and forth, light heavyweight, middleweight, he's fought one time welterweight, and he's a huge welterweight. He's got very good striking, proficient submissions. He won his uh, UFC debut uh, against Wagner Prado via knee bar. Great knee bar, by the way. So I don't see how the newcomer is going to come up against a huge welterweight with proficient skills. I got Alcantara. Hakran Diaz versus Rodrigo Dam is the hardest fight for me to pick on this card. I go back and forth, and this is really a coin flip. That's all I can say. So I'm going to have to dive deep into the statistics and the credentials to really make my pick. So I'm leaning towards Rodrigo Dam in this one, mainly because not only is he a third-degree black belt in jiu-jitsu, so even if their jiu-jitsu is dead even, which credentials go in the favor of Dam in this one. But it's also Dam's wrestling. He's a Brazilian wrestling champion. And it was the takedowns of Nick Lentz against Diaz that actually ended up beating him and winning him that decision. I think Dam is going to use a similar game plan, utilize his wrestling, and unlike Antonio Carvalho, which, you know, he beat Rodrigo Dam, razor thin split decision loss, Diaz is not going to bring the same type of striking as Carvalho did. So I'm going to go with Dam on this one. I think he's going to utilize his wrestling. That's going to be a little too much. Even if it goes to the ground and it's dead even, I also think Dam has the advantage in the striking. So uh, again, coin flip could go either way, but I'm leaning towards Rodrigo Dam. Mike Pierce is welcoming Rusamar Paul Harris to his welterweight debut. Now, I'm not too optimistic about the weight cut of Paul Harris because he seemed pretty muscular carrying around a lot of uh, muscle. Very stocky guy for 185. Mainly because he's uh, only five foot eight. And it seems like maybe he's going to cut a little more weight, try his luck at uh, welterweight. But Mike Pierce is a great wrestler. He has the wrestling that it takes to stifle a good jiu-jitsu guy like Paul Harris, who's really a one-trick pony. He's going to try to get that submission, mainly via leg lock of any type, heel hooks, knee bars. He doesn't have the striking to possess really any uh, any threat, although he does have pretty big power, as you've seen from uh, Dan Miller. He almost knocked him out. But technically, his technical striking, I don't see him being able to hurt Pierce. Josh Koscheck and him were pretty neck and neck in that split decision loss via back and forth, grappling, striking, clinching. So again, factoring the weight cut, I don't know how that's going to be. Mike Pierce has fought some of the best, great competition. I got to go with Mike Pierce on this one. I think he's going to stifle the jiu-jitsu early of Paul Harris, who's going to go for that leg lock, and he's going to be able to wear him out in the later rounds and stop him either in the second or the third round with strikes. So I'm going to go with Mike Pierce for the win on this one. Next we have Fabiabo. Mm, nah, Fabiabo. 
Next we have Fabio Maldonado taking on Joey Beltran. Now both of these guys have their fair share of losses. Maldonado losing to Glover Teixeira, Cal Kingsbury, and Igor Prokryets. And for Beltran, we have him losing to Pat Berry, Matt Mitrione, and his uh, loss against, oh, devastating loss against LeVar Johnson. But they do share a common opponent in Igor Pekryets, and Joey Beltran beat him. Now, yes, there was uh, technically overturned to a no contest. I don't think that's going to play any factor in this particular fight. I think Joey Beltram is the, the more tenacious fighter. He's a big brawler. He's got a heck of a chin. And Maldonado, ever since taking that beating by Glover Teixeira, I think his chin is questionable. I don't know if he's going to be able to win this fight on boxing alone. He'll probably be even taken down several times in the fight, and that will lose him at least a decision. I think Joey Beltram is going to put, again, a lot of punches together, and he's going to win via TKO. Next, we have Matt the Hammer Hamill taking on Tiago Silva. Now, Silva's coming off a first-round knockout of Rafael Cavalcante. But Matt Hamill, I think he's lost his fire. He hasn't really been the same fighter we've seen him be. Even with his dominant wrestling, his takedowns are looking a little more feeble. They're getting stuffed by some of the fighters, and they're just putting him away. So I don't see how he gets out of the first round against a vicious striker like Tiago Silva. I'm thinking another first-round knockout via the Brazilian. If Hakran Diaz versus Rodrigo Dam was my hardest fight to pick, this is a close runner-up because we have Dong Hyung Kim taking on Eric Silva. And in Kim's last fight, I actually picked against him with uh, Bahad Grzada for the KO or at least winning a decision. But man, he got taken down over and over again. Kim controlled him on the ground and just used that to pretty much win and dominate all three rounds. Now, could that happen to the smaller Alex Silva? Yes, you know, like you said, Kim uses his size. He can get him down to the ground. He's got good grappling, good wrestling, judo. But here's the big factor. Eric Silva's also very proficient on the ground. He's more elusive with better footwork, and he comes at you from weird angles, comes at you hard and fast, and has stopped a lot of, uh, a lot of fights in the first round. So even if it gets to the ground, do I think that he'll be able to at least get back up? Do I think that he'll be able to uh, you know, squeeze out of the positions, get back to his feet, put more striking on him? I don't know, possibly, but we've seen him gas a little bit in the third round. Even though he has been taken down, he got John Fitch in that really close rear naked choke, almost finishing him, but he got out. So he probably can do the same thing to Kim, who I don't think has the same submission defense as a guy like John Fitch. Maybe not now. Sorry, John Fitch. But uh, I might regret this decision. It might be an exact replica of what he did to Bahar Dezada, but I'm actually gonna go with Eric Silva to win. Actually, not if you're gonna pick a win, he might. <laughs> I'm gonna regret this, so I'll just say he's going uh, to edge out this fight, however he does it. Time for the main event, where we have Damian Maya taking on Jake Shields. Now, both these guys, primarily ground fighters. So this fight could have more horizontal moments than Christy Max movies. But whether, again, this fight is on the ground, the clinch, on the feet, striking base, it doesn't matter. I think Jake Shields has got to pray that he lands that one clean shot and knocks Maya out. Now, I'm not betting on that, and the odds of that are not really good because he makes me look like a professional kickboxer in his striking. Now, that's a bit of a stretch, but seriously, whether it's on the feet, clinch, on the ground, I think he has better takedowns, better jujitsu, and better striking for Damian Maya. All that's in his side. He has the better odds. In fact, if you're going to put your money on any fight, this would be the one to put it on. The betting odds are not that bad. Uh, they vary depending on the company, but roughly he's a 270 favorite to win this fight. So that's a smart bet, in my opinion. So you can go to dissensionmma.com, click on the BetDSI link, go ahead right over there. Promotion code, or promo code is dissension. Type that in, go ahead, get yourself a, set yourself up and make some money. So that is my, my specific pick for this fight, for the good odds. Also, I'm not doing this one, but if you're betting for Kim, He's an underdog. The money for that is actually not so bad. If you want to pull him, put a little money on him as the underdog. So, good. Dissension. MMA.com. Go ahead. Bet DSI link. Promo code Dissension. Also, you can get your Dissension MMA shirts again at DissensionMMA.com. Go ahead. Check them out. You know you want to get one. More designs coming in the near future. Now, I've asked people to give me their uh, any questions that they've had. They want my opinions on MMA, UFC-related things, my personal views, anything about how I'm running, Dissension MMA. I apologize it's been taking this long for me to get to it, but I have a few questions. I'm going to knock them out of the way, so here we go. Robert asks, how do you feel about weight cutting? Some fighters cut tremendous amounts of weight, which could possibly be more advantageous than PEDs. Do you feel that there should be a limit? Also, thoughts on TRT. Hey, that's a great question. I don't care about weight cutting. If you can cut 30 pounds and you can do it safely, 
Who cares, in my opinion? It has pros and cons, so let it stay. Frankie Edgar used to cut zero weight because he thought it gave him more of an advantage for his conditioning. So if a guy like ben Benson Henderson cuts a lot of weight for an advantage, and then Frankie Edgar thinks it gives him an advantage to cut none, I'm cool with it. Until there's a serious health risk or anything that the system that we have in place doesn't catch and there's a serious injury, I mean, until then, I'm fine with it. As far as TRT, I see both arguments. But as a fan, I mean, I think you need it. I do. Uh, I've seen Dan Henderson off TRT. I've seen him on TRT. I want him to compete, and he's a hell of a lot more impressive when he's on TRT, therefore making the fights I watch way more exciting. Same thing with Vitor Belfort. So these older guys, yeah, keep it. Are there going to be problems? Hell yeah. Same thing with anything you have that is a controversial issue. So I say keep it. In our next question, Brian asks, how can a true jiu-jitsu world champion be measured when there are multiple organizations that claim to be a world champion tournament? When and what will have to be done to get jiu-jitsu athletes payment for their success? That's a great question. We got Pan American, World Cup, IBJJF, you know, Naga, and if you go to any forum, they all argue which one's better. So would I like to see it like a, like a bodybuilding competition where you have one that is considered the best, Mr. Olympia, then Mr. World, then Mr. America or whatever? That'd be nice because then you can know, you know who is the true and what level and who is the best of the best. But will that ever happen? In my opinion, I actually don't see that happening. You got the guys in Abu Dhabi who run a lot of this stuff. They got all the money. They're controlling it. So yeah, pretty much it's probably going to stay the way it is, unfortunately. I think it's really unfortunate, but I mean, hey, my heart goes out to those guys. You know, until then, they're going to be arguing who the hell is the best, what, which one is the best, which one is the true world champion tournament. So I apologize, but I mean, I really don't see it changing. Now, my friend and owner of Apocalypse Syndicate is coming out with a book, so all of you people who love zombies and can't get enough of that Comic Con good stuff, go ahead, check it out. Again, you can research uh, Apocalypse Syndicate. He's coming out with his book that should be out later this year. On a sad note, I'd like to inform you, especially those who have been watching my podcasts and videos on my YouTube channel for quite some time now, Josh LaDuke, my former co-host, has decided to branch off. He's looking to commit to be a full-time fight, MMA fighter and do his own little thing with, uh, with some of the companies that he's working with. We wish him luck, and I put together a little thing as a farewell, good luck, and Hey, you know, we always gotta look back on the good times. So, here's to you, Josh. Okay, enough of that. I've grieved long enough. But yes, we wish you luck, Josh, in what you're doing, uh, becoming training full-time fighter. Uh, also be doing your own predictions and uh, with the companies that you're working with. But that's right. We've uh, been keeping tabs on the predictions since I hired you on the show. And uh, here, why don't we show the final results? I gotta admit, it was razor close, but in the end, Fight Freak prevails. The contest is finally over. Only now... We'll be continuing the competition as rivals, I guess you would say. But good luck, Josh. Uh, also, we have more videos coming up, uh, more predictions. I'm going to be doing top 10 videos where I give you my top 10 of every, you know, you name it, anything MMA related, I'm going to be doing it. I believe our first one is going to be the top 10 worst bonus award mistakes. Anybody who got robbed out of a bonus award, best fight, best knockout, best submission, give me your opinions on all those or any other top MMA related top 10 video you want to see. Also we have our first super fight coming out, Dissension MMA super fight number one, I prime Anderson Silva taking on a prime Alistair Overeem. Give me your comments on that. Also any, any requests for any super fights we're doing on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. I want your comments. Let me know how you feel about any of those, any ones you want to see. So again, I am Ryan, Fight Freak Pola, your host. We'll see you next time.